So, like many days in the shop, we have a Ford Escape with the rusted out shock tower. We're going to take this thing apart, and we're going to show you, if you don't feel confident enough about doing it, how you can get it to us, and we will do it for you. Howdy, folks. My name is Clay with the Clayway here in Muskegon, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And if this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications, sharing the videos, giving us some sweet old thumbs up. And if you've got a question for me or you need this procedure done, and there's not many procedures that I do for the public, we mostly make YouTube videos, but this happens to be one of them. You can look me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I answer questions for absolutely free. I don't collect any information. I don't care about your baby mama drama. I just try to help people every day. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. This is a long video, but this is what I'm going to show you how to do this at home if you want to. If not, just get a hold of me. We definitely don't need the work, but we'll do it for you. Now we're going to need quite a few things to remove the panel itself. And I'm going to tell you from experience, if you do it the way that I do it, it's going to be the quickest, cleanest, and you're going to be successful. Keep in mind at this point, I'm sure you're tired of listening to me ramble, but we got a lot more to go. Okay, so what we've got sitting here is we've got a drill. We've got 1 16th drill bits. We've got what's called a spot weld remover drill bit, which we got off of Amazon along with that. We've got a chisel right here that has a metal backing to it. We've got a hammer, got a punch. That's for centering our drill bit. We've got this for removing the glue that's on here and we've got a heat gun and the reason that i threw the heat gun in here even though it's not something that i personally use is i've been told by some of the people that watch my channel that they use a heat gun to heat up the glue along the edge to remove it this glue can be a pain in the butt i personally prefer chiseling it or removing it with the die grinder if you do use a die grinder this is a four inch wheel I would recommend a three inch wheel, but because I bought the four inch wheel, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. It's just the three inch spins faster and takes the stuff off. But when you take all the glue off with the, with the grinder and a wheel like that, it gets everywhere. So you're also gonna to wanna to cover the front just to make sure you don't get stuff all over inside your automobile or you'll be finding it for weeks. We're also gonna use some Loctite Max is preferable in this video we actually use the the pl three times but the premium is much better it's just about a twelve dollars a tube versus six dollars a tube i use a pneumatic caulk gun but you can just use a regular caulk gun at home you don't need anything special like this and in this video i'm going to discuss uh undercoating and bed liner much more prefer the bed liner over the undercoating, but I'm having more of a hard time getting it. The seats and the safety belts and safety equipment, we're going to use a T50 Torx and a 15 millimeter deep well. And crap, I almost forgot the most important accessory for any time in life that everybody must have. It's a lighter. No, it's not for smoking crack, people. I only make jokes because I don't smoke crack. It's kind of like gay jokes when you're not gay. They're funny, at least to play anyway. Keep a lighter because you never know you're, when you're gonna have to burn something down. In this situation, we're gonna show you how to get it done so you won't have to burn it down. It's not gonna be fun though, at least not for y'all. I do enjoy doing them, me and Patty Ray. We do these quite a bit. Okay, so the first thing we did is we removed all the trim plastic. Now the plastic that sits on here just quite simply pulls away. The seats are held down by 15 millimeter bolts and there's 15 millimeter bolts along this edge right here. And T50 Torx sockets hold down our safety mechanisms. Now for this step, we're gonna start removing all of these spot welds along here. And we do that with a spot weld burr remover tool. I'll show you a little demonstration of that. We are only going to remove the glue right here. Now this one needs a floor too because it's got a big old hole in it, but that's kind of normal nowadays. I'm not gonna show you how to make them. I make them by hand when I make them. Okay, then we wrap the front of it with plastic because oftentimes we use a wire wheel to remove the glue up to this portion right here. And there is another way that you can do it. You can heat it up with the heat gun and use a hammer 
With the hammer and with the glue heated up, you can use a chisel that has an edge on it, graduated edge right there, and remove it that way. Oftentimes, we don't need to remove all the glue down here just yet because most of the spot welds that we remove from the bottom portion of it, we remove from the inside wheel well because this panel actually on the bottom, the exception of sitting right here, sits on the outside like this and not on the inside like that. Okay, so once we've exposed our spot welds right here, we can start removing them once the glue is removed. We go a little bit further back than necessary because we wanna be able to get to these spot welds back here because this panel is pinched in by this lip and this piece of metal behind it. Now Pat's starting to remove the panel from around the outside edges. The first thing that she's doing is she's taking a punch and she's punching the center and it's a beveled punch like this. Then the next step she's doing is once she's done that, she's drilling a little pilot hole. That allows the spot weld remover to go in there and stay square on the holes when she does it. As you can tell, she's not going to drill all the way through, but as she moves, she pries the panel apart so she knows it's separating. Luckily, other than the floor condition of this one, this one is very solid. During this time, we take our hand and we put it up here in the back right here and feel like it's rusted feel if it's feel to see if it's rusted through the archway and in this situation it's not so i'm gonna save this gentleman some money okay so now she's got the horizon done and yes i said her my wife is doing it because she's pretty badass and uh if she can do it i'm certain you can too so we jacked the vehicle up and we removed the 19 millimeter lug nuts we're going to take off the one inch nut down here. Now, this does not get held, but I, if I remember correct, it's either an 18 or a 15. You can get it on here to hold it because you're probably not going to have access to the tools that I have to heat that nut off. Then this thing will break right off of here and not hold it very well. Now on this side, she's gonna grind down this area. We're gonna take this out of here and we're gonna wrap it up around down here so it's not in the way of our grinding. We're gonna grind that off and expose all the pinch welds we can from back here. We're also gonna take these screws that are holding this out of here. So when we go to fill it with our epoxy, we can fill it up all the way through the archway and run it straight. Now down here, you're gonna find it difficult to be able to drill out these. So we're gonna use a spot weld chisel. And this one's a Lyle. Uh, you just basically put it down inside there and you hit it with a hammer and it'll separate that. But be careful, this is all rotten through here most of the time and that's gonna to wanna to break as well. You'll just get some sheet metal and tie it back together if you destroy it. All right, so we've got our panel free. We had to take our chisel. When you go through this way, you have to go through two pieces of metal, this piece of metal and this piece of metal, but it's affixed to this piece of metal as well. So we usually use the spot weld remover chisel and get it behind there and break them free. And that's the same down here. We've got three pieces of metal right here. We've got one on the top, the panel in the middle, and then it's affixed to this panel right here. So we have to use the spot weld chisel to push down inside there to free that up there. And sometimes it just makes it simpler just to wiggle it and or cut it off down here and then use the spot weld chisel to remove the last remaining portion down there. But you can usually wiggle it back and forth and break it free and pull it out of there. Now with all of that stuff drilled out, we should be able to remove it from between the panel. And you can look down here and you can see how it was lipped in between this panel and this panel here. So when you drill through these ones down here, you have to drill through two different panels. Whereas in up here, you only have to drill through the first panel. Now this is what it looks like when you get it all the way out of there and undone. And this is why we didn't take the time to remove the glue because removing the glue is a pain in the butt and it comes out with just a cut.
So during the panel preparation for installation, we mark these holes. We want to keep the holes as close to this edge as possible because of the overhang of the arch. But down here on the bottom, this distance between the edge that she's got marked right there would be good enough. We want to keep them about this high up. We have to grind down the outside of this and I found that sanding discs are the best to do it with. That way, that allows us to weld it and screw it into place, giving it double durability. Each hole is about one inch apart. Now we've got our panel prepped for installation. We've got our holes in there and no, they're not perfect and no, they don't have to be. It, like if this hole is too high, we can always drill a hole a little bit lower because this is gonna be on the outside. We've made sure that we've ground the bottom edge, especially right here because this is where our new floor is gonna be. And we've ground this down up here. Now we need to test fit our panel. At times, if we didn't do a good enough job getting all this material out of here, we might have to cut this edge just a little bit off to be able to get it fit down here properly. But we also need to fit it for our floor repair. Okay, we want this panel to fit in here, so we're gonna take a hammer and instead of this being skewed down like this, we want to skew up like this so the panel will fit down in there properly. Now, oftentimes you're gonna have to put it in on a skew, down like this and then in. Making sure that this goes in between here and that goes in between there. So when we do this, we wanna make sure that our panel's in there. The panel is resting lower than it will be eventually. Now it's not gonna be tucked into all the areas that you want it to be. So you just gotta use a little bit of finesse, but the panel rides on the outside of there and on the inside of here. Now, oftentimes you're gonna find that this is missing. This is mostly missing just about every time I do it. So now what I'm gonna do, once I've got it in there and I know it fits into place, and I can just push it up there. I'm not gonna screw it in yet. Now, I will cut my floor probably right about here and back to here so it's a nice tight fit. So we're gonna remove the panel again. Now what I'm looking for is a flat edge. I'm not too worried about this extra curling metal as long as it's not rusty because we're gonna paint this and then we'll seal it up from the elements being able to get up underneath it. Now we're gonna put our panel back in there and mark out what we need. Okay, so now that we've got our panel placed in there properly, we can see what kind of floor that we need to make. And what we'll do is we'll put a screw in here to hold the panel tight. Then we'll take our eight gauge steel, we'll wedge it in between here and figure out how much we need to cut. And usually that steel is gonna come out here and go about here. Now, just take note that we pretty much have our panel where we need it, and it's going to be pretty much here when we go to actually install it. Notice our lip is on the inside of the vehicle and our panel is on the outside, just like we originally took it out. Now we take a rando piece of metal and we slide it up underneath here. We can keep it right there. And then all we do is mark it. We'll cut it square so it looks proper. Take a little bit of pride in our work. Now I'm gonna notch it right here so I can push it up further in there. Okay, so now we've got that cut up a little bit. We'll go ahead and slide that puppy up underneath there. Now we've got that slit up underneath there. Now we're gonna screw the panel down to hold it in place as we mark the back of it for cutting. Now we've got screws holding it in the place just about where it's gonna land when we're done and we can mark the back side for cutting. Having a light back here shows us that we need to straighten this a little bit more so this will sit down flusher onto the floor and we don't have to weld up this big gap right here. 
but we can still go ahead and mark it out right in here and cut that off. Now take special note from this part to this part right here, we can't really have anything hang over like an eighth of an inch further than this wall because what it'll do is it'll hit up against your shock and we can't have that. Now, because when you're marking this, you have to keep the tip this way, we'll make sure that we cut on this side of the lines that we made. I'm also gonna take the grinder and grind off this edge. Cut this out. I'd rather it be longer than necessary than I could grind it down if I have to. Okay, so I think all in all, this lip's a little bit high, but like I said, my shot comes right up through here. So I might have to grind this down a little bit. Once I start securing my panel in place and getting it tacked down, I'll be able to push that up with a hammer and put it closer to the panel. Okay, so we've got all our screws in the horizon. There's one every other hole. We need to take our ball peen hammer and knock our ledge into our panel because we've got it fairly secured around there. Once we put in the screws on the door jam holder, just like that. Now taking the ball peen portion of her hammer, we'll knock this edge down. Don't be too worried if you don't get it too close. Once we put the screws in there, it'll pull to it. You see what happens to that gap after you use the screws? People often ask me um, about using pop rivets. I don't think pop rivets are gonna be as good because these screws help pull this together. Often down here on the bottom, I'll drill a 1 8 hole every other hole so the screws go in here because this metal right down here is really really thick now if you're worried too much about it this rubber trim is going to cover this and it's not super necessary to do what i do which is weld all this on this archway but i do it for extra protection these screws could fall out get loose over time from bumping in the roads and stuff like that so often i just weld wherever i feel like welding it Okay, so I use a wire welder, which is MIG-135, which seems to penetrate both my eight gauge floor and my panels well enough. Not the best welder in the world, but I get her done. All the steps and procedures that I do in this video are the ones that I do for everybody's car. If you don't have a welder, I would recommend going to rent one, usually about $50 a day plus the price of wire which you can get at harbor freight relatively cheap even if you're not a super experienced welder that's why the screws help you out a little bit even more other than holding it they pull them panels together and that helps for welding makes it much simpler and easier okay definitely not pretty but once we put the epoxy on this and we seal it up with the bed liner and undercoating this thing We'll keep some water out. Okay, so after we're all done welding, we're gonna seal it up with the epoxy. Now this definitely doesn't have to look pretty. It doesn't have to look like the girlfriend you wish you had or the one that you had in your dreams last night. To get that look, we use some cardboard that we cut and we painstakingly just be really, really gentle. Probably add more epoxy than is necessary so when we go through it it pushes it down into the corner as we go through now in this area right here there really isn't a whole lot you can do other than epoxy this wasn't bad enough to replace the steel down here and wasn't good enough to just leave alone so we'll put some more epoxy down here and cover it up okay so we're going to go all the way up this horizon that we forgot to clean and chip off the old material around here we're going to go up underneath the lip right around here and even though we welded some of that we're still going to caulk it all the way down through there or epoxy but i gotta chip this away first and get all this stuff out of my way cure time is important no matter what you use as a sealant make sure you read the instructions and allow for the appropriate time for it to dry we're gonna use undercoating on the inside of the vehicle and truck bed liner on the outside. Now, here's the reason why. Because lately, I haven't been able to get crap for truck bed coating, but they always have undercoating. I don't like the undercoating because I don't believe it's durable or as durable as the truck bed coating to chips and stuff like that. 
it really doesn't have anything to do with price. It just matters, it has to do with availability. So I use the undercoating on the inside and on the wheel well, I use truck bed coating and I do three coats of each, three on the inside, three on the outside, usually waiting about 10 to 15 minutes in between each coat. I usually give this 24 hours to dry in a temperature that's above 60. So taking and cutting one of the flaps off of my 924 358 shock tower, I use it as a guard right here so I can spray down along here and keep it from getting everywhere on the outside here. When you do this, make sure you get up underneath your lip to seal that up as well. Now when you epoxy the outside and up around the top and areas to seal it up, you also want to epoxy above this rim right here. This And smash! This is what it looks like when you're all done. Turns out looking excellent, sealed up, and ready for many more years on the road. And then we inspect the outside portion of it, and it looks excellent as well. There's rust on the body, but not rust on the shock tower any longer, so it's safe to drive anywhere in the country. Now I know that wasn't a ton of fun, but you got her done. If this video was helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, pushing that join button. If you've got a question for me and it's automotive related and not about all that baby mama drama you got going on, you can look me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I help everyone I possibly can. I don't collect information and all of that other stuff. Just answer questions. Don't expect anything in return. Just for you to do it, pay it forward and help someone else if you would. Remember, no matter what it is in life, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next of them. Be the first of you. God bless, folks. Have the absolute best of days.